Okay, basically what you see out here is green. You will notice, the first thing you will notice, all the greens are not alike. <laughs> Typically, men have problems with green. They do not see green as women see green. Now this is some information from an ophthalmologist that used to give <laughs> lectures and tours at glass shows. So if we tell you it's a certain green, you may disagree with us, and that's fine. You're viewing green the way you view green. We have a variety of light greens, clear to a, a very dark green. So anyway. Well, I, I guess we'll, we'll start out with uh, the central glass. Uh, central obviously made uh, uh, about four basic colors that, that we have. Uh, green was one of those. To me, they're green. Now, again, as Russell indicated, I usually have to rely on Renee. Uh, Renee is an artist. She learned the color spectrum. And so I say, okay, Renee, what did they do with that green? And she would say, they, that's a little bit more blue in it. And, and, and so uh, when you actually take a look at the, the central, you'll find out when you compare that to what we would call a true Florentine green by Fenton, uh, this will appear a little bit more blue. Now, come on over here. Uh, I'd like you to see the design on this one. If you take a look at the, the design on this one, this is what we call glue chip decoration. Uh, and basically, in the factory, they had what they called uh, fish glue. Uh, they, they had other names for it. But basically, what they would do is was paint that on the finished piece. They would put it into an oven, and as this glue dries, it literally peels off slivers of the glass. And, and so it gives you this very random, uh, what, I, what I call sort of a frost-looking uh, design to that. Um, and so uh, the question is, I'm not sure that Central actually did that in their factory because there were decorating factories that would do that. So I don't know whether they sold this uh, or sold the set, the console set, uh, to a decorating company and they did it. But we do know that uh, some of the companies did have a decorating shop within that company and did it themselves. So I, I don't know that uh, with Central, but uh, you do periodically find sets that, that uh, have those matching decorations. Now, uh, moving over to diamond, to me, the, the diamond also has a little bit more of that blue to it. So if you compare the, the diamond green with the central green, to me, they're very similar in, in, in the tonality of that. Uh, but you compare that here to the Fenton, you'll notice that the Fenton has lost the blue that, that's in that green. It's, it's more of that, that uh, uh, what we call the true Florentine green. So I'm going to stop there and, and let uh, Russell and Kitty uh, again go through some of the car vases that they brought in. Almost all the car vases are made by Diamond. And they were, they sold them to a jobber. The jobber's name was Benzer. They were out of New York. So we have representation of four different styles. And, and the typical one that is <laughs> known as Benzer. Dave is showing you that it's signed on the bottom. B e n z e r. Sometimes found. <laughs> this is the only one with a reverse little ball on the Z. Okay, it's test time. Mm -hmm. How many of you were listening yeah, last night? Which car base do you want in your car when you're driving around town? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh! It's got a flaw in it. It's got this chip on the side. Doggone. Oh. oh. <laughs> And 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 this one here and this one because this little I mean yeah. <coughs> now now remember that that chip was actually put in there that that's where the set screw that so that it wouldn't fall out. <laughs> and then since you're all here, let's see if I can balance it on there. Here's the one that's done a little nicer on there. It doesn't look so much like a chip. Mm -hmm. Now they did, they just uh, took a little cut out for the screw to set. I think we're on. <laughs> yeah, are we on? It doesn't sound like it. Yep. Now it's on. Yep. 
No. Uh, Russell, do you want to de de describe the the unusual shape of this one? The, uh, for those of you that, that have seen the coin spot, uh, that normally they're opened up, ruffled, something like this. But this, this is, is how it would have come out of the factory mold. Okay. It's, and it's and like many the of the factories call this normal. Uh, when a, a bowl or something came out of the, the mold and they didn't reshape it, they often use the term normal for it. That, this is a tough item to find. Anytime you can find something that came out of the mold and was worked with very little or not at all, a lot of people prefer those over something that's a ruffle bowl or pulled over. But these are really hard to find. <laughs> and when I was in the Fenton factory a number of years ago, I wanted the finisher to leave one alone that came out of the mold. And I thought he was going to have a heart attack. <laughs> so that's my job, you know, I'm a finisher. Yeah, that's my job to do something to yeah. this. <laughs> so, that's why just out of the mold is hard to find. Um, now, moving over to Fenton, uh, uh, again, the, the Fenton pieces here, the one that, that obviously you probably have, have been drawn to it, is what in the world is this gizmo? And, and uh, for those of you, when I first saw this, what I thought, oh, well, somehow they had a, a more glass up here and they just crimped it in. But if you look very carefully in here, what you'll see is that this appears to be the top of a candle holder. And they cut that off, and when they folded this in, they actually dribbled some glass in here and fused that to it. So it's actually two pieces of glass that have been fused together. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true whimsy. Yep. Do you want to? Now we're okay. still wondering what in the world they made that. We don't. We don't know whether they were making this as a, a giant cologne. <laughs> Or a candle holder, or a lamp, uh, or, or, or something else like that. Since we have a lot of green pieces, we're going to try and go through this. There's another sign with my seashells on it <laughs> that aren't from the shore. Okay, you got it. And then we have some more dolphin pieces. Did you want to work on that? You can dump. That's a cute little dolphin. And in the 20s, they had a dish for everything, and this is for butter balls. You'd scrape the butter and then make a little circle, and you'd put them on there. How many of you are willing to do that nowadays in dinner <laughs> Yeah. If I get the butter dish on the table, I'm lucky. Now, we call those the eye cups because it looks like an eye cup, but it was really for nuts on there or some people have said salt in the catalog it says for nuts yeah. and and some of you may be, be wondering why we've got some weird colors in here at, at least to my eye there is no green in there now i think renee would would probably there say there's green. just a little touch of green it's mainly blue with a touch of green but again now why would we probably include this it has some green has some green, but more importantly, what was the name of this? Steagle. This was Steagle Green from the factory. And, and we're going to see some pieces as we go around uh, where green was in the name, but you'll be kind of hard pressed to say that's green. I think the teal is kind of fit into that also. Yes. <laughs> so you will, you'll notice the difference in color tone. This being Imperial's teal, which is largely blue, but has some green in it. Then you've got your Steagle green over here, but you can all see that difference. Well, Steagle green is a new green color that they produced in, I think, late 80s or 90s. In the 90s, I believe, yeah. Could be. And, of course, the floral Noctic is an old piece yeah. from Imperial. Now, my Renee would probably dispute... This one, she would say that there's actually some red in this. Uh, and, and remember that, that if you've got a, a clean green and add a little red, you can get this sort of a, 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 a teal color. But what did Imperial call it? Pardon? What did Imperial call 
Uh, what did? Uh, okay, so it's it, it's their green ice color, and and so it's the same. <laughs> Imperial also had a color for the iridescence. So you oh. have green ice and pearl green pearl green. Pearl green yeah. and, um, I can't think of the iridescence. If you go to hooked on carnival glass. No, I'm aware. Yeah. I wrote up a couple of articles. Yeah, the, the, on the helios is the one that, that's really <laughs> oh, yes. yeah, on there. Okay. Okay, the next one we have is by Jeanette. And that looks more yellow than green. Yes. If we can back and up just one minute. On the vase, the base of the vase is more than five inches. I think it's five and a fourth normally for the imperial vases. That is considered, anything over five inches is considered a funeral vase. But those that are under five inches are the standard and then there are some little baby ones, and they're just called the small vases with a two-inch base on them. Yep. They, Carnival Glass people have a lot of fun with their vases, and they've got to have them as funeral standard or babies. Yeah. which is a small miniatures. Okay. Now, the, the, one of the reasons why we have this Jeanette piece up here is that uh, this verges on the Coke bottle green. Uh, for that, and, and this is a very unusual one. We do know that Jeanette did make a different green, which is a, more of a darker olive green, and, and this is uh, uh, not easy to find, but, but much more obtainable. Uh, this color is, is pretty much the first time that I've seen this color of green. So that one may be a fairly unique, and, and of course, uh, it's been jazzed up. Uh, my feeling is that that's not factory decoration, but uh, some other person uh, decided to try to jazz it up a little bit. Can you turn around and show those people yeah. the pieces? Oh, oh yeah. You just hold them up and, <laughs> and, like, see them and then come around afterwards and you can okay. really get a good look at those pieces. Oh. <laughs> if you missed it, too bad. <laughs> That's okay. It's being recorded. You can watch it on, on your big screen TV at home later on. And he mentioned the <laughs> Coke bottle green. Now, all of you are familiar with Coke bottles. All of you are familiar with Coke bottles from the 40s and the yep. 50s. They've kind of changed the formulation. How that came about in Atlanta, Georgia, when Coca-Cola began in the early 1890s, uh, the run of glass that came from the glass factory down there was kind of this odd color green. And it was accepted by Coca-Cola and then became almost their trademark. Right. <laughs> and then they still use it. Uh, it keeps cutting out. No, yeah. it keeps cutting no, out. No, it keeps cutting out. They still use that color. And some people refer to some of the green glasses, Coke bottle green. But it's kind of a patented green by Coca-Cola. <laughs> okay. Uh, as far as I know, I've, I've never found a piece of Lancaster glass that's actually green, the, the glass itself. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I, I do have a piece of Lancaster that's iridized that's a uh, uh, pink, uh, and, and so the, uh, it's very rare, but uh, virtually all of Lancaster stretch glass is crystal glass, but then they had a whole line of, of uh, what we call the lustry line, uh, and, and they had a green lustry, which is this green enamel. Uh, it's an overall enamel effect that, that runs from a, a sort of a bright green to almost a cream color. Uh, and then they often added uh, floral enamel designs to that. And, and so uh, since this would be their green lustry, that's uh, why we've got it in here as part of the green. Show them over there, Dave. Just, yep. what, <laughs> just lift it up for them so okay. they can come back and get a good look afterwards. Okay. Our next greens we'll talk about, Northwood. You notice there's kind of three different shades of green here by Northwood. And we collectively would call this emerald green. Uh, and uh, what we don't have here is russet, uh, which is their much more common line. It's down uh, there. That, that has uh, the, the much more... Uh, well, he's... Wait a minute, just... 
And like all of these, the, the russet can vary considerably from a fairly light olive green, uh, like, like the master salt, uh, to uh, a very dark. Now, a lot of you probably just say, well, that's thicker. That's why it's darker. No, it's, it's a darker uh, olive green. They made all of this glass to sell, not for us collectors. So there's variations. <laughs> you can tell that this particular Northwood emerald green is more to the yellow than mm -hmm. it is the emerald. Your emerald green will have blue in it. Now we get to the opaque greens. <laughs> now U.S. Glass did make a few uh, uh, pieces of, of true, uh, what we'd consider to be Florentine green-like. Uh, it, it's very similar to the, the Fenton Florentine green. But the rarities uh, in the U.S. Glass, the, this table has, has some of the, the, the rarities on it, uh, would be this uh, uh, sort of a translucent uh, jade green. Uh, that, that uh, is fairly extensive. You can find uh, that fairly uh, uh, easily. Uh, the more difficult ones are the Carrera line, which are the slag opaques. Uh, and again, uh, Barry Wiggins wasn't exactly sure uh, the name of this. The, there were some of them that said it was forest green. Uh, and and uh, uh, what was the other, do you remember the other green that, that was added to that? Uh, uh, now, what's really neat? Yeah, what's really neat about this, if you uh, uh, find a lot of uh, look at uh, the the pieces of these, many of them will have a transparent edge to it, uh, and then it will one. go into the the slaggy. And and again, I'm not sure exactly how to achieve that uh, because I don't think it's a striking color that would have strike and uh, stricken opalescent. But it's really a, a, an outstanding event. And of course, uh, these are, are the ones that uh, uh, achieve premium prices in, in uh, most of the auctions. The reason why everybody calls that a ribbon edge, the ladies would weave <coughs> ribbons in there mm -hmm. and have them on their wall or even on their table, I guess. Not very sanitary. But. <laughs> See, this one is slag all the way out to the edge. Right. The other one... Uh, was not. Yeah. And once in a while, you'll run across one of these um, with this open edge work. You'll run into one in the shop with the old ribbon still in it mm -hmm. but, and a deteriorating silk ribbon. <laughs> and we are headed down toward violent. Yep. Our, our last one is, is uh, the, the violent flint. Uh, a glass company, and, and uh, I, I guess you've all heard of, uh, Cal and I and everybody else talk about Vinlin. Vinlin seem to have absolutely no quality control, uh, and, and uh, again, we're not sure whether they thought that was their their crystal, uh, or uh, but uh, almost all of the pieces you can see another set over here that have that are fairly consistent. It, it's a very light. Uh, uh, green and and uh, I guess unfortunately or fortunately one day uh, Cal said that looks like Coke bottle green to me so it, that one's kind of stuck uh, with it but not quite as dark <laughs> but as it's not quite as dark as a true old Coke bottle <laughs> look like probably the same batch to me <laughs> now how do we know that this is a vinyl and stick it lo looks exactly like a Fenton one to me. It's got the, this little shoulder down here uh, where it joins. Well, again, remember that the vinyl used a three-piece mold. So if you check up here at the, the top, you'll see there's a mold seam, a mold seam, a mold seam. So there's three molds. That's going to be vinyl. Uh, if it was only two mold seams, then it would be a very rare Fenton one because I don't know of any Fenton that, that made that color. Okay, I'll switch Thank with you. you. <laughs> Are we going to go through every piece or just generalization? Well, uh, yeah, we, we could be here all day uh, for this. Uh, I guess the, the 
we can make some generalizations. Uh, uh, the way that we've arranged these is, is actually by functional pieces. And, and so uh, the, these are the serving pieces. As you can see, we've got uh, uh, sherbets, uh, we, we've got mayonnaises, uh, salts, uh, handles, servers, and, and so forth. Hopefully you can recognize, uh, the, the, to me, the things that are obviously different. Uh, if you take a look at the russet, uh, that's, that's a real standout. That would be obviously Northwood. Now, when Rosa Slady was alive, uh, uh, she hated russet. She didn't really like it, but she said her, her husband loved it. And she always, uh, because of that experience, she always said that russet is either a love it or hate it. Uh, kind, kind of a glass, and, and she used to say that, that more men like it, but Renee likes it, and, and uh, I guarantee she's not a man. So uh, the, 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 the reality is, is I, I think it's just one of those colors, it, it either strikes you and you like it, or you go, nah, I, I'd, I'd rather have a blue or green or something else. Let me make a comment on these <coughs> two pieces. Tom Burns, I have to stand close to somebody for the recording. <laughs> Tom Burns calls this the smallest punch bowl. So if you see in his listing a small miniature punch bowl, it's one of these on there. Okay. And then the other piece that I think is important, because I own it, we paid a lot of Is it working again? But we're not we really sure. I have to stand just next to you with yep, yep. We're not really sure if this, what use this had that I've seen a lot of early American glass in the same shape with these ears, and they were salts. And this would be the master salt with little ones. But I've never seen a little one, have you? No, no. On there, I don't know. If anybody else knows what this shape would have been used for, let us know. I think it would be a butter tub, by the way. It, <laughs> it really in, could in be. In the Depression patterns, they had Butter mm -hmm. tubs that had tab handles on them. Oh, yeah. And remember that butter in those days was either made in blocks or in rounds. Round of well, everybody ideas. here serves butter like that on their table every night, don't you? <laughs> I don't. And no. of course, having the tabs would keep your finger out of the butter. <laughs> on, on that. I mean, you know, it's interesting about the, the whole butter thing is it started out round, then it went to sticks. Today, when you buy the soft margarine, it's round again, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So. And when you make it every day, and you, yeah. I, I, I guess just to, to quickly go through some of the, to me, some of the rarities here, uh, the the two-handled uh, uh, dolphin uh, bowls, uh, and uh, uh, I had a square one, and, and the Steinbacks came in with an oval one. Uh, you see these, uh, these are very common in uniridized glass, uh, but finding them in, in iridized, and, and we know of, of pink and green, are the only two colors. Uh, now Russell's holding up uh, a Dugan's uh, Windflower, uh, a Dugan Diamond. Again, uh, this is one of the classic crossover pieces that has a, a true carnival pattern in it, but uh, nice stretch effect. Hold that up again, Russell. <laughs> and you'll also notice that we have duplicates of a number of things here. On purpose, look close. The shades of green are different. Yeah, and and to give an example, uh, there these are two different sherbets, but again they're that that sort of general jade green, and you can see one of them has definitely a lot more blue in it uh, than than the other one. Uh, very different. As we get on around, we'll we'll see some vases that are a very dark green, and and so the batches varied considerably uh, on these. I have a question. Sure. What the, what the tea. Tea. The, the tea the, those would have been teacups. Yeah, the, the question is, is, is what was the purpose of, of the uh, cups? Uh, and, and while we might use them for coffee today, they were originally teacups. And are they not extremely rare? You don't they are they're scarce. They're, 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 they're tough, tough to get, especially the diamond optic, uh, obviously uh, commands uh, premium prices for it. Uh, but any of these, now, the, the, uh, if you find what looks like a cup but it's straight up, doesn't have the flare to it, then you're, you're looking at a punch cup. Let's see, uh, I guess I would uh, draw your attention, uh, not because it's mine. 
but as far as we know, uh, there, there's uh, uh, very few of the uh, central center handled uh, uh, servers. And, and uh, here's uh, one of those. Again, you can see uh, when you compare it to the, the Florentine green, it has a little bit more of that blue color, which is typical of, of central. Uh, this one does have a, a acid etch uh, edge design to it. And my feeling is that's probably not uh, the the uh, central factory. That's probably a secondary decorating company that, that put that. Yeah, Russell's got the the uh, uh, an example of a true punch cup, which, as you can see, is is uh, straight up as opposed to flared out. Turn around, Russell. Put the people over there. Just show them. Punch cup, teacup. And yes, the punch cups do come in green. We just didn't bring one out. That's the one that goes with the U.S. flag. Right. Right. Uh, Cal, Cal had asked about the uh, handled server here at the end that you can see is kind of an olive green. Uh, and if we, as we go around, we're going to see some more olive green pieces and, and some bowls and comports, uh, and that's a U.S. glass uh, color. And, and so uh, if you take a look at the handle, you'll see this rather distinctive small loop handle uh, in there. It's not straight top. Uh, to that, and that's very distinctive of, of the U.S. glass handles. Okay. You want to do the cologne or okay. mask stuff? <laughs> that's probably a good description. Colognes or, or bath things, bedroom sets, and the like. Um, these up here are all made by Fenton. And you notice the green is pretty much the same shade of green. Fenton seemed to have a little bit better quality control than some of the other countries, companies. Now, Dave is holding up the, the diamond optic perfume. What's unique about this one still has the label. And if you'll notice, this label is the same as the little sign. And that, that was their logo at that time of the, of the uh, production. It perfume in it. <laughs> Whose perfume Sitsu. is that? Yeah. Who owns it? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to show it around. I'll be really careful. There's two perfumes and... Two perfumes and a powder box to go on a small green tray. And it's kind of a mix and match. We've seen them with the flower top, with the pagoda top, and a, a larger... There's a nipple top. Yeah. yeah, a larger cologne. But typically when you see them, and they're listed in the catalogs, it's one of these and two like Kitty is showing around. They come both diamond optic and just plain. Now, some of the things that are always very difficult is finding out whether you've got an original stopper or not. And what I wanted to show you here is, is uh, we've got uh, Reslo, uh, uh, Reslo, uh, uh, Reslo was, was uh, very nice to, to bring in these. Uh, and, and what I wanted you to notice, uh, these have the flower top, but notice that one has been ground down and the other one is the full length. Now, this one that's ground down is perfectly acceptable because that was what they fit into this lower cologne, okay? But in the taller colognes, it would have been the full length like this. Now, in many cases, what you'll find, I, I think there's one in the auction here, when you pull it out, it's been cut off right at the bottom. That, that's uh, one that somebody damaged it, they took it to somebody, and, and they just uh, ground it down and flattened it off. What we are showing here, we have the, <coughs> the powder puff boxes, a larger one. Uh, I, I guess the, the one thing that I would uh, point out here, uh, we've got some really interesting smoking paraphernalia here. Uh, we've got a uh, iridized uh, 
the box, there's the bottom, uh, and here's an interesting tray. Now, what's the peg in the middle of that for? It's not, yeah, that's where, where you put your matchbox, and when you put it down, it shoved the box open so that you could retrieve a, the match uh, stick uh, out the other end. So pretty neat little piece. Uh, also notice that uh, here's a very rare diamond one. Um, and this was actually just the, the matchbox holder. Um, and so uh, the, the matchbox would have been on, on top of that one. Uh, I've got one of these at home and, and I've got a really old matchbox uh, in, in it to, to sort of jazz it up. The other one that I think is interesting, uh, uh, we used to see the, the uh, Fenton uh, ashtrays all the time. Again, the ashtrays have a matchbox uh, tab uh, on the end of them, but the thing that's always tough to find are the inserts. And so when people are going by, they say, well, do you have the inserts? And, and dealers are always say, well, what are you talking about? Well, those are the, the little uh, dishes that used to go in here for individuals and the most important thing that you need to understand is that there are four different sizes of those. And so to, have a, to get a complete set in any color now is a very tough thing to, to, to do. And, and so, <laughs> sure. I forgot this, so I'd like to give credit where credit is due here. So I, I own the ashtray, um, picked it up somewhere in Young Homer, and had the ashtray for a number of years. Uh, used to talk to everybody about the inserts, and so I looked. And one year, John Bailey showed up here at the convention and said, "Well, I know where the inserts are in your ashtray." And I was like, "Okay, well, are they for sale?" Well, I think so. And I said, "Well, okay. So what do we have to do?" Well, he even raised the blind. I said, "Yes." He said, "Okay, I'll get in touch." Well, the man on the other end of the phone was Ken. <laughs> uh, Ken, was, Ken never got identified in that transaction. I think I wrote the check to John Daly, and he probably gave the money to Ken. So I hope he gave the money to Ken. Um, but years later, Ken came to the convention, and I don't know if uh, I don't think we had the asterisk set here, but we were talking about different stuff and whatever. And he said, "Oh, by the way, you know, I'm, I'm the one that had the inserts to the asterisk." So, thank you again for helping me make it complete set. The, <coughs> no, let's, okay, we'll finish the sure. show here. Perfect. Okay, what we haven't said much about is the bedroom set. What you see here, it's not a tumble up. This is the tumble up. Glass goes on the outside. This being the bedroom set where the glass goes on the inside of the picture. Extremely fragile. And Tom has a number of them up there you can purchase tonight or whenever the auction is. Now those are kind of hard to find complete because the glasses do get broken. Yeah. In front of that we have the little square cologne bottles. Sometimes you will find the whole set and they will be marked with uh, something like Lavoris, cotton, uh, and some other things you would have in your bathroom. And then we have a bell on top, which is newer, but you notice the green is pretty much like the old green. So Fenton kind of kept their <laughs> glass recipes, even though they're proprietary. They kept them and kind of kept quality control up. Normally they're ruffled, but that's a special one. Now, Dave, you've got this fat picture over here. Pardon? You've got this fat picture. Oh, yeah. Uh, an, another one of the, the more difficult to obtain uh, uh, pieces of, of I, I suspect it's fairly early Fenton, uh, is, is this uh, round shaped or, or ball shaped uh, pitcher. Uh, I know of it in, in blue and green are the only two colors that I know, but I've heard there's a marigold one out there somewhere. Uh, what's unusual about this one, if you haven't noticed, is that we did mention when I was talking about the bowls and, and the uh, uh, bases that there are iridized bases. And, and this is the base that goes to the pitchers. And, and so uh, uh, that one's again kind of unusual. Uh, likewise, the, the tumbler that goes to this is a little barrel shaped tumbler. And, and again, 
Most of these you'll find, uh, they've, uh, these are very thin, very fragile. They've been chipped and, and ground, but the original ones would have been fire polished uh, on the rim uh, and, and not secondarily ground. Dave, turn around and show it to the yeah. people over here. Okay. Is that a different size tumbler than the uh, tumble up tumbler? Yes. yes. Oh, yes, definitely. The, quest the question is, is, is that uh, a different size tumbler? And as you can see, it's quite different in, in size. <laughs> They're both kind of barrel shaped, but one's much smaller. Correct. And you will find those tumblers and never the pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> so this is kind of one of those things that's the other way around. Also, the reason why the tumble up and the bedroom pitcher have the glasses in there is to keep the bugs out at night. You know, you wouldn't want to be drinking something and feel something in your glass. <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess I would point out uh, for the Burns auction, uh, there, there is, this is one of the few pieces of stretch glass that has a name, and, and this is usually called the Brooklyn set. And, and uh, what's, what's nifty about uh, the, the set that's in the Burns auction is that they have four tumblers that, that go with it. And, and uh, again, as Russell indicated, occasionally you'll find these tumblers around uh, and, and quite often they're sitting in, in uh, you know, one of the, the little display boxes or something like that. So when you're at, at antique uh, uh, flea markets and things like that, uh, these smaller ones often get hidden away. So you need to look for them. <laughs> is that a lemonade? Pardon? Lemonade? Uh, this no, is juice. Uh, like orange juice. juice. This, this, was, this was for juice or mixing cocktails. <laughs> Don't all of you use your Brooklyn pitchers for juice in the morning? They come in marigold, they come in the green, and they come in in a wisteria. I've never seen a blue one. Yeah. Now we have another named piece. It's a cigarette box. What makes it is the lid. It's an engraved, it's an engraved lid, yeah. and it's named as the KKK yeah. cigarette box. <laughs> It, okay, and and what's what's uh, actually neat about this one is that uh, it does have the wheel cut design, but then that KKK on the outside is acid etched. So they actually had to go through a couple of processes to to get the decoration on that. I'll show that while you guys describe okay. it. Shall we do the russet? Okay. Or or no? Oh, these. we've got ring optic. Sugar and creamer, okay. Made by Fenton. They also come with a diamond optic, yeah. But it's kind of a wide diamond. It's not the little tiny diamonds. Okay. Then, we then have uh, another uh, color of green, but it's yeah, diamond. If you, if you take a look at this one, this is the again that more of a blue green, typical of, of the uh, Dugan diamond uh, in, in the Adams rib number nine hundred pattern. And again, uh, the, the, the real tough one to get in, in these sets is, is the creamers. For some reason, we have a lot of creamer collectors in this country. <laughs> they gobble up creamers, and you have this renegade orphan. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of these, few of those. Yep. And now we'll go to the russet, which is... Yeah, we'll, we'll go back to, to Northwood. Uh, we've got a russet. And, and does anybody remember what uh, Russell called this last night? This is one that, again, does have a name. Barbella. 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 Absolutely. Good. And, and so, uh, again, very difficult to find, in, in, usually in, in topaz, uh, and even tougher to find in, in uh, a russet. Uh, now, are you aware of any blues that have shown up in this? I, I don't think of any. No. And then uh, another one that, that people often see is the, the so-called concave diamonds. Uh, and, and again, you see this in, in topaz and blue very commonly. Finding it in russet is, is very difficult. Uh, and what's even more difficult is to actually find the, the, pit, the lidded pitcher that goes with that. And I want to be very careful uh, with this. 
as far as I know, this is the only one known at this time. Um, and, that is perfect. Uh, <laughs> There's a cracked one. Yeah. Well, no, this was this is the cracked one. Oh, uh, okay. That's why I'm I'm holding the bottom of, of that. So there may be another one that that. Uh, does anybody have one of those pictures? Okay. <laughs> then we have the diamond pitcher, which is kind of more like a cocktail pitcher. Yeah. And there's something unique about the handle that Dave will point out. Yeah, it, it, typically it, it has this very definite crook. In many cases, it has sort of a, a pinched area at the top of it also. But more importantly, most people, when they see this, are going to think it's a piece of art glass. Why? It's got a roughly ground, what looks like a roughly ground pondle uh, on, on the end of it. But again, to finish this off, they, they put it on a punny rod uh, in, in order to, to finish it and had to break that off. Uh, but again, it's, it's a uh, blown molded piece uh, and, and uh, would be considered to be uh, a true uh, uh, stretch glass in a mold. Now, some other thin glasses, again, you see them fairly commonly, uh, or at least you used to. They're getting uh, much more difficult. As you can see, very, very thin. I'm always surprised at how these things survived. Uh, uh, but there's two sizes of these. These are what I call more corset-shaped, uh, or I guess portly-shaped. Uh, they, they've got the fat part uh, in the side. That's very different than the barrel-shaped ones that, that we saw with, with Fenton. Uh, again, you can occasionally see these tumblers uh, in blue, green, and I've seen a couple of them in marigold. Now we go to the diamond. Looks more like a big old teapot, but it's a, <laughs> it's a pitcher. Another named piece. Anybody know what the name of that is? That's called Pretty Panels. Okay. The Carnival Glass people espoused that many, many years ago. Now how does how does that differ from pastel panels? Pastel panels is Adam's <laughs> rib. Okay. And what's interesting is that remember that this is an optic panel in the picture. In, in other words, when they took a gather of glass and made a bubble. They put it in uh, this uh, mold that made the ribs on the outside. Then they took that uh, hot glass bubble and blew it in the, in the mold of this shape, and that shoved those ribs to the inside. And so if you feel on the inside of this, you'll feel the ribs. What's interesting is the matching tumbler that goes to this, the ribs are on the outside. Then we go to Imperial's. Picture, another named piece, Chesterfield. And uh, when you see this uh, often in, in uh, Marigold, uh, it has a lid to it. But as far as we've known, we've never, uh, uh, nobody has ever shown up with a stretch glass lid. So I don't know if, if, they, if they didn't make a lid because they had to reheat it and maybe that, that reshaped it and the lids didn't fit. Uh, or what, but... Uh, shown lid with lids in the catalogs. Yeah, that's what's, what's so annoying. Lids, <laughs> and what's really puzzling, we actually saw a set, a red set with lid at, uh, I think it was the American Glass Convention in 1974 wow. in, in Stanton, Ohio. And it was right around 4th of July time. So the theme of all the displays was 4th of Red, July. White and blue, yeah. Red, white, and blue. And there was one gentleman had a beautiful display, flags and everything. He had the three colors, white, blue, and the red. And they all had lids. And I said, oh, that's interesting. In those days, none of us knew that much about the thing. Wow. <laughs> and I did not take pictures in those days. <laughs> I wish I had. OK, Dave's got two more odd-looking pictures down here. Okay. Uh, I, actually, this, this is another Fenton one, uh, and, and again, the difference is this one is, is very lightly iridized, and this one's more heavily iridized, but as you can see, they're, they're the same. Show okay. <laughs> yeah, but I get, I, I get uh, vertigo when I start. 
twirling around. Yeah, I don't want to I want to do that with the glass. They're both Fenton. Yes, those, those are both Fenton. And here is who made this one? Look at the color of green. Sure looks like Fenton from here. It sure looks like Fenton to me, and it is. Uh, this, this is another Fenton piece, uh, and uh, this is the the tumbler that would normally go for that. It's a fairly straight sided tumbler. Okay. And I guess uh, we didn't. I, I should have brought my pitcher. Uh, I thought somebody else would, but uh, there is an Adams rib uh, uh, pitcher and, and uh, tumbler sets, and, and these would be the handled mugs that would go with that pitcher. And that's called pastel panels by the Carnival Glass people, or as we call it now, Adams rib. Yeah. But it commonly comes in blue, less blue. Right. And we need a pitcher to go with that tumbler in green. So if you have an extra one. <laughs> Has anybody ever seen the picture? I think I've seen. It's a, a tall, yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen. Picture with ribs around it. Now you commonly see this in depression glass. Non iridized. To me, what what's really interesting about this is that I keep talking about the the blue green of of uh, diamond, but uh oh. Uh, here's here's a tumbler that's more of a, a Florentine, but it still has. Uh, if you get it right next to a Florentine, this still has a little more blue in it. When you talk, you can use that <coughs> voice. <is> getting weak. <laughs> now we're going to go to bowls. We have a good selection of bowls in a variety of greens. Hmm. No doubt. Everybody knows what that one is. That's, that's your Fenton melon rib bowl that's been turned in. This is the typical bowl that we find almost everywhere across the United States. Your little open edge two row uh, basket weave bowl. These are fairly common in a lot of colors, but notice that is slightly different in color. A yellow green and the regular Fenton green. Turn around. <laughs> now show them this bowl here. It's really spectacular. <laughs> I don't know if you can all see this. That's just a six forty seven bowl. Well <laughs> but look at the it. look at the cut work on it. It has hearts. With arrows running through them, so it's a perfect Valentine's. <laughs> Wrong color for Valentine's. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what we're looking for now is the red one with this. Perfect for <laughs> perfect for February 14. Yes, and who made it? It's got a wide shoulder and straight edge to that shoulder. Fenton, hey, absolutely. <laughs> Baby. He's cute. He would fit in my cupboard. <laughs> hair receiver. <laughs> you know, as we get older, our hair falls out. Yep, that, so that's. Stick it in there. That's. Any bracelets out. I love them in necklaces, watch bobs, or watch the chain or the watch bobs. That hair receiver didn't have a cover. No. Well, I, uh, actually, the. the the statement over here by Ken uh, Pakula is, is that th this have a lid on it. Uh, actually, this is the, the number 106 of Fenton. Uh, when they cupped it in, it would have been the, the hair receiver, but when it was just lightly cupped in, there is a lid that fits on it, and, and at that time, it would have been the, the number 54 jar. <laughs> Some, Again, uh, hmm? six, six four, 640 line uh, in the uh, Northwood, uh, in, in the emerald green. But again, you can see there's a really dark uh, and, and a, a lighter uh, in, in the greens. Oh, there it is. Uh, 
yeah, here's, here's another Northwood piece. Uh, this one's always confusing to people uh, because this one has, an, instead of a snap, uh, uh, Marie, this is, this is a stuck-up piece. Uh, and it was ground off. My feeling is, is that these early stuck-up pieces were the ones that uh, Northwood started with and then they went and converted over because it fits exactly on the same 638 base. And, and uh, when you find an actual 638 bowl, it looks exactly the same thing, only it will have a snap, uh, uh, Marie, rather than the, the uh, stuck up. Then we have our U.S. glass, a translucent <coughs> green. There's a, uh, a rolled-in bowl. We have the flared out bowl sitting down here too, but just some of the other edge work that the finisher will do. And this one has the ground bottom. So, yeah, all, all of those bowls are stuck up. This one here is really translucent on there. It seems like ours was a little more translucent than this, but yeah. you can see through it. Yeah. As far as we know, uh, there were two of these bowls. There was one, and uh, th this is again the, the number 900 line or, or Adam's rib, uh, what we call it today, of uh, the uh, uh, Dugan Diamond uh, uh, Cup. Uh, there was a blue one of these, uh, and in shipment, uh, the person who was shipping it didn't wrap it very well, and it arrived in, in blue shards. Uh, and, and so far, this is the, the, uh, the green one that uh, uh, is in existence. What does caramelized people do when we break one of our pieces? Make There's jewelry, huh? Jewelry people, <laughs> and they make jewelry out of it for us, so at least we've got a memory of the <laughs> This is the, the uh, Fenton Fern dish. Uh, it's a, a three-footed, uh, It's mold, the feet are molded in there. Again, when you take a look at this, it looks like it has a ground pontal, uh, but if you run your finger across it, uh, when you get to that, you know, your fingernail will always catch uh, in it. And, and so the, the technical term for this is a ground marie. There was a little knob that the snap held onto, and when they finished it, they cut that little knob off and, and ground it down. Don't and, put any plants in it either because when you put plants in there, your water has salts and stuff like that in there that leach it out. And when it has all the white stuff in the bottom, <laughs> you really can't get it out so your value goes down the drain and then you can really use it as a plant. <laughs> then you, can put, no you can put dirt in it at that point. <laughs> 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 Now, Northwood did make a lot of plates with the discussion we just had where they've got the ground off Marie. And a lot of people thought it was art glass. You get, and they made them in all their colors. And one year, I was doing some digging around the old Northwood plant and got a lot of shards. And one of the shards that I got was part of a plate with that ground Marie. Hmm. And... Uh, since it was shards out there, the portion of the Marie where they had uh, had it stuck up had big black stuff on it like you have with corroded iron. And that put an end to the thought that, well, it must be art glass. No, it's, <laughs> it was pressed iridized glass. They had a, a factory next door and we were out there gathering the shards in the rain and Boy, that's neat. Mm -hmm. Nice little 310 piece. Where's my water? We really made their day. <laughs> now, uh, Russell's picked up a, a 310 piece. Now, remember that the, the U.S. Glass 310 has the rays on the outside uh, and points. Uh, there's also a 314 line which has rays in, on the inside. So one is optic rays and the other one is, is external. Uh, this one really displays the, the stretch iridescence through it uh, by being rolled rim. You can actually see that reflecting through there. Uh, another 
to me, really oddball, interesting piece uh, is this one. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, another Fenton piece. Uh, we, uh, I've talked to Frank uh, several times about this. Uh, he thought that they were trying some different types of uh, iridescent effects and, and so forth. Uh, and uh, I don't know why they didn't make this. Uh, to me, this is really an outstanding piece but they actually used a marigold iridescence uh, on the green glass. And of course, uh, this has the, the complicated pie crust uh, 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 type of crimping on it. Now we have the oddball green. Yep. Now, to my eyes, this is green. <laughs> a real green. <laughs> green. And again, if we take a look at this one, uh, we can see that uh, this has a fairly narrow uh, shoulder on it uh, and, and very small rounded uh, uh, collar on there. Uh, and, and so that would be central. Okay, so this is another central piece. And you notice it's kind of a different green than all the others that we've been looking at. Yeah. Now we are back that? to a pattern stretched by... <laughs> Diamond Dugan, well-known carnival pattern, a horse medallion, or horse head, sorry, and frequently called the pony bowl. Um, it's best known just in the green, and they call that ice green in the carnival world. Well, and there's a lot of these around. And it's only the in carnival glass, that's ice cream. It's only the ice cream that has the stretch effect. The marigold, the amethyst, and all like that, all are strictly carnival glass without any stretch finish. And also when you label it. Yeah, he put it back. Oh, no, no, over here. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Stick the label back on. <laughs> The treatment on that bowl is wonderful. Uh, this this appears to be a central uh, bowl uh, from from the shape of the the Marie, but it could be actually, if it, if the snap was in here, that could be a U.S. glass uh, base. But uh, did anybody notice anything odd about the interior of this bowl? It's really frosty, and it looks like what you put okay. on your fish tank. Yeah, to give that frost. Yeah. Very, very unusual. Now, uh, for those of us that, that used to be uh, mudslingers, uh, that, that, that means doing pottery, uh, there is a special glaze that you can use that's called a crystal glaze. And when you fire it, it grows these crystals. And my feeling is somebody jacked around with this bowl, put that material in it, probably reheated it in a kill, and it, and it made a kind of an interesting effect. You see that, that crystal uh, in there. Uh, it obviously also screwed up the base, so they ground the base of it off. And, and so, uh, uh, where's Burns? Okay, this is a truly a one-of-a-kind unique piece. <laughs> Now we get into Fenton pieces again. There's two pieces out here with the triple dolphins. I'll hold this one up. These can be found. And they come rolled out, rolled in. And Dave's got the giant rose bowl. And right now that's the only one in the green that has turned up. But that's a very complicated uh, mold that Fenton used to make these. And you can see the complication. If you look close, you'll see that it's a three-part mold and a fourth part down here, and then you got the plunger. So it's very complicated. And Frank told me trying to get these dolphins to stay put, <laughs> you know, the breakage was high. Yep. I think we need to speed it up. Yep. That's, uh, uh, my, my feeling is uh, we're, we're, uh, uh, we've only got about 15 minutes to go here, and, and so we're going to try to speed this up a, a little bit more and, and hit some of the high points uh, in, in here. 
Uh, Russell's holding up a, a, a sort of an emerald green uh, uh, pieces with marigold iridescence in them. Uh, Barry Wiggins thought that these were uh, a, a Dugan diamond uh, piece, but when you really look at the base of these, what you'll notice on, on the snap of the Marie, it has that straight side, straight side, straight side, which was more typical of the Northwood. And to me, that makes more sense because we do know that Northwood made an emerald green. It's just that they usually didn't marigold uh, iridize them. And we'll pass over a few of these. They're, they're pretty. Yeah. And come over and take a look at them. This one has a carnival glass name. Anybody recognize the name? Frosted Buttons. Oh, okay. But in, in stress glass, we often call that matchstick. Uh, there's, there's, uh, we're getting into to some of the plates. Uh, when you get over here, uh, uh, take a close look. There are some plates that have the laurel leaf designs in them. And then there are some other plates. Uh, Fenton made a whole set of, of uh, I think it was three to four different acid etched designs around the rims. And, and there's two different sizes of, of plates that have the uh, acid etch. Uh, designs in them. Uh, okay, uh, here's some round laurel leaf, uh, some 310 pieces. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I have to ask you about this. Kathy Johnson needs to know about that. That has, appears to have the same pattern as her combo. And I don't know who made that. The same, well. That's, that same pattern is in her combo. Yes, it but does. in this particular case, now I'm going to see if I can hoof back here and get that. In the meanwhile, <laughs> what we have shown is an example of the green punch bowl by Fenton with the base. The bases are extremely rare. You'll find bowls all over the place. And this large bowl was made out of this. On the same page in the Fenton catalog, you will see a third bowl. It's called an aquarium sitting beside the punch bowl. The, the punch bowls that have been indented, were they made from that exact mold? Yes, they yes. Is yep. so that considered a whimsical item? Or that nope. No, part of the line. line. So here, here we have the, the Fenton covered bonbon without the, the foot. The, this is a particular jar. If you take the base of that and flatten it down, you have a plate. This is Fenton. Yep. So, doesn't that pattern look the same as what's on that? Compound? Yes, it, it does. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it, at least on the inside of it, but uh, the that those top crimps and, and things like that to me are quite different. Yep. We have another Jeanette green. You notice that's kind of kind of a light olive green, and um, this is about as flat as they come. That's our bowl, and the iridescence is splotchy and everything else. So we call it the ugly piece. It's mine quite hot. <laughs> a rarely seen shape is. The no. tri corner shape. Yeah, I made that thing. Uh, that's a fin piece. It is heavy. Yeah, with with this really goofy. This is a very early Fenton piece, on, and a tri corner bowl. And and my feeling is this could use a good cleaning. Uh, I I think there's a a Florentine green under there. Uh, looking in here, there's a, a fairly uh, good amount of stuff on there. Our next series are vases. And there's a various types of vases. The fan vase um, will accommodate a flower frog that looks like this. You'll mainly find these flower frogs not iridized, but this one is. Um, the large vase, a very popular uh, type of vase now comes in a variety of colors. One of Fenton's, and and this one back here is a very important thing to notice. We don't have the flower pot that goes on right. this, but from the flower pot, they made the ring optic 
bases. They come in three sizes. Um, Russell, before we go any further, uh, I've, I've had a request. There's a strange little plate in here uh, that, that has the uh, external panels almost look like uh, flute uh, on this one. And, and uh, uh, as of right now, this is uh, uh, claimed to be imperial. Uh, and again, I can't refute or, or confirm that, uh, but uh, it's, it would be the only sort of a blue-green that, that uh, uh, is, is in stretch that is uh, claimed to be imperial. This table has largely opaque and unusual patterned <laughs> vases. Um, these actually have carnival names. And yeah, let me see what that one is. Uh, but that's one of the, the it's panel. panels. It's Fenton panels, isn't it? I think so. <laughs> and then you have your thin rib vases over here that are in russet, yep. I think we have two really important faces over here <laughs> that we should point out. The tall green one is. Uh, this, this is this is uh, five and a fourth inches across so the base. A funeral base. And how many of you have any of those? Anybody? We have one in Celeste blue. And the gentleman that owns that has another one in Marigold. Wouldn't the Celeste blue and the green be pretty together in my house? Hint, hint, hint. I can see right yeah. now. Oh, hint, hint, hint. Yep. Uh, the funeral vases are. And then this little one over here, but I don't know the pattern name. Uh, the gentleman asked which vases are cross connected with carnival and stretch. This one over here would be one of those, but I don't know a yeah. name for it. Do you? Well, I've, I've, I've been, I've been, yeah, I've been checking that out, and it, it does match the Adams rib. Uh, I, I think that is a, and it is a Dugan diamond piece. Uh, it comes in blue and green, and my yeah. feeling is it's probably a, a number nine hundred uh, vase that, that they made, but I don't know what. Well, the, the carnival people are different on yeah. them. There's differences, but if anybody finds a name, let us know. Now, there's a whole line that uh, Dugan Diamond made of this, and they come in a variety of, of shapes and colors. Yeah. And they, they actually had three names that they applied to this, uh, uh, Venetian, Pompeian, and Japan. Uh, Japan. Uh, and, and they're... Once you get a whole series of these uh, together, you can see that that uh, the, they do fall into distinctive frit treatments uh, on those. Yep. And, and then you the pretty panel space. So far, it comes in the green and also a celeste blue color. And they're definitely Adam's Eagles. rib, as we right. call them now. <laughs> and that's the vase. If you want a picture, you just. While it's hot, you make a little spout, and then you add a handle. Now, Gary, why did why did this get in there? That's this uh, clam broth glass in here. <laughs> That's imperials, sometimes called imperial jewels. Yep. Sometimes the, called imperial art glass. Yep. And this, it the, is pressed. It is iridized. And it's the name not is blown. Per it's Pearl, Green. Pearl Green is the name for it, and, and it's, uh, it's characterized in their description as that it reflects green colors. And, and indeed, if you hold it in the light, you can see green being reflected. We'll uh, get into some baskets. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of the Dugan baskets that comes in a... It's the plate, uh, the little uh, star star plate that uh, they pulled up and put a handle on it. Uh, Russell and, and Kitty had a blue one last night. Here's a green one. And then you have this form of a Fenton plate with the chrome handle on it. Um, we don't have a Plymouth one out here uh, to show you, but it comes more straight up. The Plymouth is a different pattern. 
Now we get into covered candies. Yeah. Uh, various shapes, various makers. You can kind of pick, and we have a new one in there. Yeah, yeah, there's a Stiegel green one. Uh, here's a, we were, we had seen an olive green, uh, uh, the handled server over here. Here's the, the olive green. This is in the, the uh, 314 line. Uh, it's got uh, paired optic rays on the inside, but no points. Pardon? This is U.S. glass? Yeah. These will typically come in three sizes. Your quarter, your half, and one pound candies. Hey. More bowls. <laughs> um, probably the most unusual <coughs> is this large bowl. Uh, a U.S. glass green. Yeah, this, this is the large U.S. glass uh, one, 179 footed bowl. And, and what's, Barry Wiggins always used to, to love to show these in the base of them. If you look at the base, there's always a bump uh, in, in here. There's a round bump. Uh, apparently, there was so much glass in there that when they pulled it out, it may have sagged down a little bit uh, in there. Uh, I think most of the rest of these, here's another uh, uh, slightly different olive green. This is again the 314 line. Uh, it's got the paired rays uh, on the inside but no points on it of U.S. glass. Some more uh, of the, the uh, opaque greens, but uh, when Russell and, or Kitty was saying there's a more translucent one, you can see this one is really uh, very translucent. Then we have three dolphin handle pieces here. Yep. Uh, this is your diamond optic one. Yeah. Or some people call it quilted interior. Are those new? Uh, this one is, but uh, no, this one's new also. Yeah. This is what's going to be confusing, and I understand <laughs> somebody's going to be giving a seminar in the next few days. Uh, the difference in how you tell the new Fenton that's not marked from the old. Uh, that should be interesting. Yeah. Uh, I would like to point out in, in our uh, book, uh, we had this piece in the Imperial. Uh, and, and uh, you know, Barry wasn't sure about it. Uh, John and I wasn't sure. We, we stuck it in Imperial because there, there were some Imperial pieces that had similar design. My feeling is, is now that if you see it with U.S. glass, U.S. glass, U.S. glass, my feeling is that's a U.S. glass piece. <laughs> so we have several stemmed compotes in here. The Adam's rib. Yep, there's the, the little. Some of the stems are rather interesting unto themselves. Yeah, the 1663 uh, stem comport. Uh, now we get into our candlesticks and lamps. Yeah. Now, why in the world would the bug doc bring this uh, dark marigold candle or the uh, lampshade in here? Well, you almost have to, to hold it up to the light to see that it's actually on emerald green glass uh, in this. And, and this is a Northwood shade where they used a, a lot of marigold on, on that, but uh, the base glass is, is an emerald green. That piece would easily be called rare <laughs> that you never see them. Okay. Uh, oh, one last one. Uh, Cal and... and uh, uh, talked about this over on their display uh, uh, yesterday. This is Cumula. Uh, again, it's a crystal glass, uh, but they put a, uh, a green uh, enamel on the back of it and then overlaid a white enamel over the top of that uh, to give you this sort of cloud effect on, on the inside. Anyone know what that is? It's called a smoke bell. And if any of you have like kerosene lanterns, candles and whatnot. Well, in the old days, they would have one of these hanging down so that the smoke that went up didn't crud up your ceiling. And also your furniture, like your buffet, that a lot of the really old buffets, if you look at 
up next to the mirror, you'll see three uh, burnt spots in the wood. That's from your candles, and that's the reason why they use the smoke bell. But the people that had our buffet before us didn't use them. Okay, any last questions? Thank Cal, these folks want to eat. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Kitty.